Hello, my friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to do some testing specifically on the Kotlin Flow API. Let's get started. So here I'm having just a simple Android Studio project. So it is using the view system, but we are not see, going to see any views. So we are going to write some tests. Specifically, I think we are going to write a view model, and then we can change some UI state based on some request from some flow. Yeah, let's do that. So usually we develop that in test-driven approach, but let's just write something like that. Let's just call it person view model. Let's pretend we do have some API that return us some view models. So basically I will have it in the following constructor, right? I will have private bar called persons API. It is a person API and yeah, let's create class here directly, why not? And what's well, not class interface? And let's have one simple method that return us, for example, yeah, get all persons. This is just demonstration purposes, and it will be flow of something. Yeah, let's put everything here. I expect something like, yeah, let's just put name here as string. Okay, this is just for demonstration purposes. So let's pretend we do have that, and then I think we can have UI state for that. Let's call it person screen state, for example. It will be a sealed class. Let's make it like that. Usually I will have always a class of success. It will take place of person, for example. Host will be person screen state. And we do have some loading screen, for example. Why not? It will be an object. Yeah, we do not have that. And let's pretend we do have like generic state, which contains also like failure, something like that. It will take while throwable. Yeah, something like that, why not? Well, here for the flow, this is just for demonstration purposes. Otherwise, I usually use span functions here in order to return it, but I think it would work for the moment. And then, yeah, I will have a mutable state flow. So it will be UI state, it will be a state flow of the UI state, sorry, it's the person screen state, we will get it from backing field of UI state. This one will be another property here, and it will be a mutable state flow, like following, and it will be like that, let me just put it directly here. And here, let's start with loading. Yeah, usually we do have loading. And here, yeah, let's just put person screen state loading as initial state. And then we will trigger this with some fetch persons directly. It will be function here, it will be a private function. And here in the fetch person, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm just going to use view model scope to launch some query team, right to launch normal thing. And here, I think we are going to need dispatchers where here is the thing. If you want to unit test this view model, you have to swap the dispatcher you are using. So if you are going to do something like that, dispatchers with IO, in the test, I am forced to use that. But we should make this swappable. I saw some code in which they put all the dispatcher under one interface and pass this object that contains all dispatchers. But I can pass everything here. It's not a problem for me. Yeah, let's just pass it like following. So it will be private val, IO dispatcher, something like that. And I will do have also a main dispatch. For the outer, I will use the main scope, which is usually what's calling. I will use the main dispatcher. And basically here, for the start, it will start with the value here. It will be normal, let's not put it also here. But after that, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do person API, dot get all persons. And then I will flow on the IO dispatch. So with that in mind, I can now do the collect like that. So basically, if I collect list of persons, what I'm going to do with it is simply, I will use the UI state in order to pass the value of person screen state of success with it. So it is a list of persons, I can name it person, it's no problem. Okay, that would work. And we do have another problem. If you have a problem here, catch, I will get throwable. So I will just put the same line here. But instead of that, I'm going to pass failure and it will be it, which is a of course. 
that would work fine. This is vanilla state view model thing. Usually we implement it like that and it works perfectly. Now, purpose is not this view model. The purpose is to test this. Usually we drive this, uh, as I said, in a test-driven way, but it's not a problem for demonstration purposes. After that, you can use that view model in the activity, get the thing, get your things displayed to the users, and it will be good. Now, here I'm going to write the test for that. So let's create a test here. Let's call it person view model test. And it would be normal unit test. It doesn't have to run like an instrumented test because this would be fast running test. Okay, but we have problem. We have to define this person API. So we can mock it, of course, but I'm going to create different versions for that to test the different scenarios. So let's start. Uh, we need some dependencies for the test. We are using JUnit 5 here, 4 here. Okay, it's not a problem. I wanted to use JUnit 4, but it's not a problem. We need Turbine. The library we are going to use to test flows is called Turbine. It's developed by the Cache App team, in which we have Jeff Wharton, for example. So this is the first one we need. As you can see, it stays with test implementation here. And yeah, we are not using something related to live data or something. So we don't get this main thread thing. Yeah, it will work fine for the moment. So let's write our first test. We create it for, okay, for the happy path. So when creating view model should fetch persons. Here we will have the dependencies or thing. For the test, I usually write the test from the bottom and we go up, like from the assert and we go up. But let's try to write normally. So usually what you are going to need, you are going to need view model to test, of course. So it is person view model like that. This person view model requires many things. One of which is the person API. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a fake API here. Let's call it class. And let's just call it normal or in memory person API. Something like that. It doesn't make sense to have person API in memory, but okay. Okay, we will have it like following, and it will be just person API. And here we will implement the method get all person. Here it must return a flow thing, so we are going to return flow, flow like that, and we are going to emit after delay. Well, I'm not going to delay anything because this is for the test. I'm going to emit a list of users. So here is the thing. I'm going to put the list here, but in future parts, I don't know if we're going to do it right now. This list will be inputted from here so the test will know what's happening because we can swap it we can put it in different package okay so the reader of the test doesn't have to go back and forth between the test and this file in order to check the values here so it will be just a list of person let's create a person called Yunus and another person called Mohammed for example okay I'm expecting two users and now I can create this person API here I can pass it here this is the person API. Then I need two things. I need two dispatchers for the main and for the other one, which is the IO dispatch. I can use the same for the two dependencies. It's not a problem for the test. So here you can create it like following. You can create test dispatcher and repeat it two times. Not a problem, as I said. And let's create local variable and it will be just test dispatch. So for test dispatcher, I need a dependency for that. Let's get here and try to have it. It is this one with tests, I think. This one with test, I think, but it is for test implementation. Yeah, let's run it. I think it will work. It worked. I can go back here and I can check for test dispatch. Yeah, so this one is deprecated. I can use unconfined test dispatcher. Yeah, that would require this thing. Let's put it here in the file so it will work fine. Well, I can put it here. It will work fine also. It's not a problem. So this is the dependencies for the view model. And now I must ensure that after just the initialization, I can start using my view model. So now having this view model, we can start testing. So for the view model, we do have the UI state. And using that UI state, you can do one simple method called test. Okay, now keep in mind that I changed this one to run with test dispatcher. So this will allow us to do several things. And first of all, what we are going to assert, we are going to assert that we are having a person screen state of loading flows. Okay, this will come from what? From the next item that the flow will produce, which is we do that with the wait 
item like that. It will run so fast, so it won't catch this one. So if you run this one, I don't think it will work. I think we are getting success. Yeah, exactly. We are getting success because it's running too fast. So here we are going to delay it with one second, but we are not going to delay the test. What I'm going to do here is that we are going to advance the time by one second. So this technique, we use it in advancing the time in, in QWERTY and stuff. And then we are going to assert the second thing, which is the success of the list of these two persons. I'm going to just to copy it, paste, and this will run perfectly, exactly. I don't know if you can await that complete. I don't think it will work. Exactly, it will wait and it didn't. Like it's receiving the event of completion, but I don't know if you can. But what you can do, we are going to ensure that all events are consumed. By default, we call that, but yeah, it will work fine. Yeah, so this test is testing whether we are getting two things, right? We can do the same test to check that our failure is working as expected. So when creating view model with error in API, API should get failure event. So we are going to get loading, but here instead of the in-memory API, I'm just going to create, well, this is just a different fake. Let's call it, yeah, an available person API, okay? So basically in the flow, it will throw an exception. Yeah, let's do throw, and let's just throw an IO exception, for example, like that. Sorry, we don't have any persons. And sorry, Typo here, let's make it like that. And instead of passing this one here, I'm going to pass this one. And I'm expecting, well, this shouldn't work. Like I always check that my tests aren't working. So we are expecting a failure with an IO exception, like that. Mm, I don't think it will work because it must have the same thing. This is a problem, I'm just going to pass the test. We should have something not like that. So what is happening? The failure is not the same failure because it is a data class. Like that, it will work. Why? Because we don't have any persons. Why is that? Come on, expect a thing. I exception, I exception, like the messages aren't the same. Like, yeah, the I exception is not the same. So probably we should have here just a message. I don't know why I did it like that. And basically here, yeah, I will just remove that. I will ensure that usually we do special classes for errors like that. We don't use the ones directly from this one. So it must have this as a failure. But I think I'm having a problem here. I'm just going to take the message. Okay, for double bank, let's run it. I think it will work. Yeah, exactly. It's working fine. And that's it on how to test with turbine. Like turbine, as I said, provides many elements here, weight error, complete events, and all the other stuff. Yeah, that's it for this video. You are encouraged to check the documentation for more things. As you can see, there is this weight complete. We did it like that, weighting error and all the other stuff. Please check this documentation and See if you can write tests with it, write tests in different scenarios when we have errors and we have normal head path. Also experiment with this advanced time, it's good. And that's the flexibility that Kotlin and Coroutines gave us. We can run the test in flexible environment so we can test specific things. Yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video at the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.